Oh, the air is bees. Air bees cold. What? Oh, the air is bees cold. I can't English like that. Of flake and white, as a sailor begs their pledge. Oh, I can poetry now. Um, that doesn't rhyme. To the ice they'll pray that leads reveal, or out in the ice they'll stake a claim, or that in the dark they'll brace themselves. Yeah, we can do that. Or Horus still ahead. Now it rhymes. Of glory found and forged in frost so that their tail be spread and hunger draws the desperate here. I don't know what that means. I need to level up my English, apparently. <laughs> uh, it's one that can't be fed. What will you do when steel hearts break and courage does abscond? I'll do what must be done indeed out in the pale beyond. <gasps> the temperance is a bit of a wreck. Ooh. Crew wanted. Able bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. <laughs> there you go. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. <laughs> Glory to be had in the event of success. Address over leaf. <laughs> okay. Wait, I've seen that before. Metronome. Um, you're alone in the office. The tea in your hand has long since gone cold. I'd rather coffee. Looking around the room, you can make out a collection of military books. On the desk is a ship in a bottle. A metronome ticks away steadily. I find it rather calming. <laughs> oh wait, we don't want to fall asleep. The dedicated rhythm soothes the senses. The room is sweltering, the air stiff and stale. Uh, keep waiting. You hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. Remain standing. The door behind you swings open. The captain bounds past you to the other side of the desk. He's so fluffy. Look at all the fluffy things. Do you have all your teeth? One, two, three. Enough enough to get by. Oh, our name's Shaw. Now we know. Can never be too careful. Captain sits down. It's the little things you can lose people to. You are late. Um. Are you speaking from experience? How many people have died under your supervision? Well, more than I'd care to admit. Can you remember their faces? Every single one. Hmm. Please take a seat. The chair is uncomfortably large. The seat feels worn. Stop ticking. A 
I'm Captain Hunt. Oh. He nods. I hope you weren't waiting too long. I'm told it's worth the wait. Good. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good, some bad. Interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need for discretion. Listening. Months of darkness. Oh, look. The intense stare. Low wages. Slim chance of safe return. So that didn't deter you, did it? Quite the opposite, it's why I'm here. A thirst for adventure then. He winks. <laughs> I'd keep that to yourself around the other sailors, they might drown you in it. I have a few questions first. He looks down at a list of questions. Were you born a landlubber or a sea dog? Um salt born. All right, he's got the symbol here, and it was on the advert. Uh, on the ocean. I am salt, born and bred. Military experience. I served the merchant lines for 12 years. Very good. What did you trade in? Well, anything. <laughs> he nods. Have you ever fired a weapon? No. Have you ever killed a man, directly or otherwise? Yeah. Hey, Chris, welcome. I see. You're not married, are you? Of course not. You better not have a death wish. One must believe they return to justify leaving in the first place. Any less and you're doing yourself a disservice. We're here to find that ship. The ship in that bottle. The Viscount. Heard of it? Uh, no. Enlighten me. Clears his throat. <laughs> In the bottle! Easy! Job done! Let's go home! <laughs> How's it going, Chris? How did you like the demo for uh, 10, 20 minutes till dawn? 10 minutes till dawn. Five years ago, she set sail on a research expedition towards the Dead Peninsula. They were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic site. Did they? Did they what? Did they find it? The magnetic south? I have no idea. He never came back. The last known location was 200 miles south of land, presumed lost to the ice. And we're supposed to be chasing the ship. It's awesome. Glad you're enjoying it. Oh, you can survive. Y you can do it. I was, I was uh, trying. Um, yeah, the horse is the the that is is hard to dodge on stream. I had some trouble figuring out how to dodge it. Um, there are some different approaches you can take to uh, to beat it, which is possible. You can defeat it. Um, it's also possible to evade it for ten minutes. Yeah, but it's a good it's a good little game for sure. Yeah. So after the stream yesterday, I played some more of that. Um, a top-down shooter with uh, some progression and unlockables. 
It's really good. Very simple design and uh, very efficient. Fun. <laughs> uh, right, so we are supposed to be chasing the ship. Exactly. Well, I'm going to need more than rumors about lost ships if I'm putting my life at risk. Naturally. <laughs> Here's what we do know. Not one person or thing has been heard from the Viscount since it first left port. Uh, until now. Until now. Someone was found who claims to have been on that ship. Uh, where are they now? Dead. But their testimony seems to have outlived them. Those with more money than sense want that old ship. That's the job. If I don't pick the first mate, somebody else will. And, uh, well, my judge of character's gotten me this far. What of our crew? Quite the mix, work in progress. Some I've known for years. They get in on uh, trust and experience. Others, well, they interview. How large is the crew? Uh, work in progress. I'd estimate over 20 when all is settled. We do have transport though. We'll be traveling on board the Temperance. He's a beauty. Greenwood generational. Not many like it left these days. The Viscount and the Temperance, they're sister ships. Built together, sent out into this world to die alone. That's rather poetic. Indeed. I like to think one calls out for the other. The captain looks at the bottled ship. So, what do you think? What do you think? Sounds like you need all the help you can get. <laughs> we will. The captain checks his watch. Anyway, I think I've heard enough. Hands up. We leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Shaw. Proverbially speaking. Hmm. Don't you need more information? Not if I'm a captain worth his salt. I work with people, not professions. I'd sooner trust a good carpenter than a cruel sailor to save me from drowning. But alas, I'll see you in the temperance. But uh, I have a good feeling about you, Shaw. <laughs> that makes one of us. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. The cat makes his way to the door, and you follow. You arrive at the docks a month to the day. Before you lie the ship, the letters on the side spelling temperance. Alright, so we can uh, enjoy the atmospheric sound effects and look at the pictures but in its at its core this is uh, more along the lines of visual novels so far the game is awesome you played more cool glad to hear it glad to hear it you walk the cobble to the boarding ramp beside is a sharply dressed man overseeing the loading of cargo so many people. He turns to you with a stern expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. He's quick to inspect you for ink. Another sailor for the fold, mid deck with the others. Robin Shaw. Oh, of course, that would make you the captain's choice for first mate, correct? I'm Mr. Templeton. I shall be operating as the chief science officer on this expedition. I'm also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. Do, however, consider myself and my team at you. What? At you and the captain's disposal. All right. Okay. Yeah, I. They speak funny. I need to read twice sometimes. <laughs> I 
I'm fairly certain we're all disposable. Uh, what did you specialize in? Dead people. Applied botany. Okay. Looking forward to working with you. I expect you to be up for the task. Some of the layabouts unhired are uh, questionable at best. No doubt I needn't inform you of your duties. You're second only to Captain Hunt himself. Though I must warn you that you have quite the task ahead. The rabble I've spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you'll have to whip into shape. Punctuality, schedule, strict adherence is what we need if this expedition is to succeed. Good morning. Uh, I expect you to be organized, the organized sort. You would not have been assigned the role otherwise. He's a full on asshole. I doubt there will be much issue. We can only hope. But your role is more strenuous than it would first seem. Let me know when you're ready to depart. I'm certain you're eager to back to be back on the ocean. The less valuable time we waste here, the better. Aha! What thickens? So we have um, different places we can look at. We have a uh, time scale. Morning, evening. Or how's this working? It's going counterclockwise. Morning, day, evening, night. Interesting. And it's 12 degrees. Nice temperature. So, a young man stands at the ramp, steeling himself for the journey ahead. Hesitantly, he begins to drag his feet up the ramp and onto the ship. All right. Hans' description of the ship was accurate. Ooh, it's a dragon. And it's a sailboat slash steamboat. Huh. Near identical to the Viscount, bearing the some uh, modern additions, uh, barring some modern additions. You'll be gone for quite a while. It will be some time before you see the city again. Yeah. Off we go. Week one. On the Temperance. First made sure, personal log. It's been a month since I signed on and one week since we set sail aboard the Temperance. I'm told the waters will get warmer as we pass the hemisphere before they turn colder. The, temp the Temperance? I've never been on a ship like this before. He's magnificent. A technical marvel. Elegant machinery expertly weaved through one of the fastest hardwood ships of its day. Reborn for this mission, breathing again with life. She's simply magnificent. As for the rest of the crew, there are now 22 of us, including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice. To pick up the remaining four members of the crew, the scouting team. And is also keen to work out a deal on a pack of sledding dogs. I'll say it with worse. We came across all kinds of uh, trading with... What? We came across all kinds of trading with merchants, but rarely this split. As for its master, he's mo he mostly keep, uh, kept... What? He's mostly kept to his quarters so far. I'm not sure what to make of our leader. He's not telling the whole truth. I can't shake the feeling that he's not telling the whole truth. Truth. <laughs> Despite that, I find myself warming to the man. 
One of Hans Sailor's approaches. Joe. Captain on to you at the helm. I'll head there now. Okay. Captain's cabin, the forecastle. And the captain. You ascend the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of the ship. Interesting style. The animations and the drawing is a, an interesting mix. And the two different styles of drawing. Ah, Robin, lovely day for it, isn't it? It is indeed, Cam. Indeed. Days like these, I make sure to do my share of the sailing. He wings. <laughs> he thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkled hand. Did you ever take the helm in the merchant navy? Here, why don't you have a try? Okay. You grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your arms. The memory in your muscles rear themselves as you begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. Ooh. So you can uh, look around a bit. Easy. There, you have it. The captain pats you on the back. Fantastic. Now try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Peaceful, isn't it? Well, the zooming out is very, very, very slow. That should go faster. Aha! Uh -huh. He takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink the morning in a little... what? I'll drink the morning in a little longer. I was about to say I'll drink in the morning. But that's not what he wanted to do. Would you mind preparing my quarters for the day's work? There's much to do. Okay, so you can uh, go here. And make that a lot faster yeah. still a lot I think that works better probably can go for seven ah, it's too many stages they are two small steps I would want to change that anyway um, so The crow's nest currently stands unoccupied. Guarding team are expected to join at the next port. The forecastle doors appear to be locked. <gasps> right, the captain's cabin. He's got a bathtub. Uh, that's indeed a luxury. Classical painting depicting sailors doing battle with the kraken. An ode to an old folk story of the great captain Seamus dance with the salt kings. On the desk you make out a variety of papers, notes and maps. As well as a sealed letter with a stamp you recognize as the mark of the Apperton Tinning Corporation. The desk itself is suspended with ropes to keep it safely in place. Okay. You take a seat at the end of the room. The cat joins you. Now, let's run through our provisions before taking requests. To start, there's 23 souls signed onto this expedition, ourselves included. And 16 free to be, what? Free to be assigned to tasks and the rest deployed to their permanent stations. You're only able to deploy crew 
who you have discovered. What? Discord. They must be in good health and not otherwise deployed to another post. We'll be picking up the scouting crew at the next port. A lot of us also seem to be in good spirits. The expedition will tear itself apart if you end the week with no decorum left. Decorum? Uh, here. Something you, you need to manage. Uh, decorum and the crew jobs. We have enough provisions for at least six months in case of emergency. Crew members will start to develop scurvy and be unable to work should you end the week with no food left in the hoosh pot. The hoosh pot. And more than enough fuel to see us there and back again. You will all freeze to death if you end the week with no fuel in the furnace. Okay. The sledding dogs. Well, they are still a matter of negotiation. Dogs will be needed to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice. Now... On to work. Cordell and Corvid. Okay, so you manage uh, the, the resources there. Uh, so far we see five of them. Sledding, people, food, fuel and morale. A sailor enters. We found a stowaway in the lower hold. Bring them in. Another sailor enters, leading a young man by their side. You know, you're not the first doorway I've had. Okay, we studies them further. You know where we're heading, don't you? I do, sir. The ice. Did you know that before you climbed inside the crane? I did, sir. Ha! <laughs> How old are you? You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true. I can pull my weight, sir. Do you know your jaboom from your bow spirit? What? Bow spirit? He's what now? I do. I learned it all from my dad. Dad. Why? <laughs> they speak so funny. Um, your dad? His ward's son followed him on board back in the city, says uh, the sailor. What should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, Shaw, hunt ice you up. Your first mate, what should we do with him? I keep them aboard. Hunt squints. Why? You need all the help you can get. This young man wants to help. I'd say we let him. Alright boy, consider yourself part of the crew. Be sure to keep your nose clean and follow orders. I will, thank you sir. Captain. Not sir. I can. The stowaway joins the two sailors below deck, now a member of the crew. 24. Well, it seems the little the litter has a new runt. I hope the rest won't mind sharing their rations. What of the father? Well, I doubt he intended for this to happen. We'll keep an eye on them. Suppose you're right. Well, that matter sorted. Dell, have you agreed upon my conditions? point, eh? Shaw, this is Lady Cordell. Cordell here is to provide us with the kennel of hounds for the sleds. And our agreement was that she would train them up until we part ways at, nearest, at the nearest island, but uh, you neglected to inform me that you were bringing my dogs through the Pale Passage. I had no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have good faith in this expedition. <laughs> it's one thing to ask for my whole kennel, it's another to drag them into the ice to chase a myth. And that's the whole point of this. Never before has a buyer been so dishonest. And never before has a seller made such strong demands. 
what exactly are the demands. He demands we allow her to come along on the expedition as a member of the crew. None on this ship have the experience and familiarity with the dogs that I possess. If you're taking them to such a brutal location, they will need me to guide them if they have any chance of survival. The humans on board too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma, Shaw. We've just accepted a stowaway. Bringing on another member of the crew is a risk, but our hands may be tied. I don't see the harm in having an expert on the sled dogs. A good point. This deal is already to your benefit. Do you have anyone on board with extensive training in the management and ruling of dogs? Your sleds are useless if you can't control the dogs efficiently enough to hold them. And I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. Yeah, it's pretty. I like it. It's uh, The atmosphere is, is good. It's very slowly building up. Very, very slowly. So for the sake of the one hour, it's it's a bit of a tight fit. So we, we barely see the beginning of the actual game. But um, for what it is, it works pretty well. Um... with this slow start. Welcome aboard. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Invaluable. <laughs> I'll have a room prepared for you below deck. No need, you'll find me in, for in the forecastle with the dogs. She does like her dogs, she does not like humans, I think. I hope I'm not making a mistake, Shaw. Well, we have dogs, and as if I understood it, uh, stood it correctly, we can get um, resources uh, in the ice when we have dogs. So we, without dogs, we would be worth worse off. Now that that's all settled, now that that's all settled, I have one more errand for you to run. Could you grab the Stoke brothers and order them to meet me up deck after dinner? Hefty lads, red hair. You couldn't mistake them for another. Uh, who are they? You haven't met all the crew yet? The stoves have been serving me for years. They'll be down on the middle deck. In the meantime, you should grab a copy of the crew manifest and get acquainted with the more of the crew. Yeah. Grab a crew manifest. How do I grab a crew manifest? Hmm. You can hear the kennel master preparing the room, okay. Who's that up there? Upon closer inspection, you make out the ship's photographer, Kasha Belford, balanced on the ship's mast with her camera, lining up a photo. Wait for her to finish. Snapping a shot, she clambers down, only noticing you on uh, her landing. Oh, Officer Shaw! It's about time I met the first officer of the ship. Now she's going to take a photo now. Kasha, Kasha Belford. Nice to meet you. I suppose there was some sort of rule against what I was doing. Keep his apologies, but sometimes there's a shot you can't just cannot pass up. An accomplished photographer, Kasha Belford won the Fentler Prize, the highest honor in journalism for her work covering plague outbreaks and riots in the capital. Oh, gee. All the jolly themes, right? <laughs> it came as a surprise to many that such a reputable journalist would take such an interest in this expedition. There was scarcely any chance of Hunt or the benefactor turning her away. You expected someone of her accolades to be older, more experienced. This is likely her first time on the sea like this. Oh, she's not prepared for this. That much is obvious. Hmm. A cold game. Picture that as a header. And what? With a piece on this voyage. I'm trying to come up with a snappy name. Nobody will read it if the title sounds like the work of an amateur. 
Well, I'm not the creative type. I'm sure you'd know better. Kasha tilts her head and grits her teeth, holding an inner debate with herself. <laughs> Maybe not. How about Hunt's Incredible Voyage? You fantastical? I suppose I'll find the right name when the time comes. I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Apologies. I'm a little uh, excited. <laughs> Never been on a voyage like this. I suppose in your experience, the Oakland Ocean is the home of the mundane. Though I suppose you never travel this far south on the merchant lines. Uh, you have that, right? That's a shame. Looking out on that open ocean, I don't know how anyone could find it dull. No wonder the great explorers like Kurt Darling would always come back to it. That reminds me, he'll be joining us at next port. I should get his picture at some point. Uh, Kasha holds up her camera with a sense of pride before holding it up to her face. Stand still, Shaw. See? I knew it. Uh, the captain sent me to grab a copy of the manifests. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm putting together a manifest of the crew for you. He hands you an annotated document. Here it is, the crew manifest. Ooh. So, it's, it's, it is, after all, a bit more than just a visual novel. Uh, it's an atmospheric exploration adventure thing. Right? Sailor Stowaway Saltborn. Sailor Ice Sevy. Yeah, the Sunless Sea. That is a good game also. Also one of those slow slowly building up ones. Amelia Corbett Sparrow. Gillian Smurf Sanders. <laughs> Joseph Joe Grant. Well they are very <laughs> Are they all Kickstarter backers? Hopefully not. Um Anyway, uh Engineer, scientist, head scientist, <laughs> land lubber also, just saying. It's us, no picture. <laughs> Rufus. Mud wash. He doesn't know if he was born on land or sea. All right, that's pretty cool. It's a work in progress. The scout team are to join us at the next port and the captain's forbidden me from the lowest deck. If you could ask the others to get the portraits taken, I'd be very grateful. I don't want to leave anyone out. Uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll not disturb you or of your work any further, officer. I have a few more shots I want to get before the sun lowers, anyhow. Safe shots, don't worry. Leave her to her work. Yeah, pretty cool. Isn't it? Two Johns. The low deck. Game of chess. It's a big ship. Music. Ever so faint. You find yourself almost knocking over a man carrying a heavy pot. Careful, careful. You almost got drenched in broth. You're the ship's cook, are you not? Indeed I am, and I've got a full plate on my hands, pardon the pun. You hear a roar from the other side of the door. Oi, what's holding you up? The cook shakes his head with a smile and chuckles slightly to himself. He grabs the large pot and prepares to make his way to the hungry crew before turning his head to you. If you don't mind, could you carry that tray of biscuits behind me? Carry the tray of biscuits. Uh, in a rush. 
Of course, of course, you have important business to attend to. Do it yourself. Junior, where's the bloody feed? I'm on my way. Is your brother around, Grimly? Oh, of course. I take that to mean the hunt is on the look for us. Don't you worry about it, I'll grab Grimly. My brother's quicker to offend than I am. I'd hate to unleash your people's skills upon him. Ah, shut your trap. Eventually. All the crew for dinner. Land lovers also, yes, probably. Two chunks. You spot a large man with a youthful gait, carrying a heavy crate over his shoulder with relative ease. Huge, make large, big. Uh, oh, your officer Shaw. Uh, he gives a bright, warming smile. Two Johns. That's what they call me. I'm sure you'll get your nickname later. Two Johns attempts to offer a handshake but loses control of the crate. He struggles before firmly holding it in place with both hands. Ah, uh, maybe later. Work awaits. Plus one available crew. All right, so we're still learning about them. This is a mix of a social text adventure and exploration and resource management and yeah, I don't know, mystery solving, I guess. The crew have their meal. It passes in relative silence. The crew return to their post. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. Twilight falls. Oh, there's father and son here. I should not disturb them, I think. Who's that? You spot one of Templeton's science team pacing around the mid-deck, searching through some luggage that has been pulled from a cabin. Let me look in the light. Where was it now? Mr. Gloss, he notices you. Ah, Officer Shaw, correct? Dwight Glossley. Apologies, I seem to have misplaced something while settling in the cabin. A bottle of wine, actually. Can't be hard to miss, it'll turn up eventually. I would hope so. My wife and I bought a bottle, brought a bottle to celebrate with. It'll be saved for the journey back, of course. Well, if you find it, please let me know. Uh-huh. White Glossley. And now they're added to the manifest here. So the first part of the game is about kind of getting a, getting a feeling for the ship and the crew, actually. It's, it's nicely done. Um, as you look over the railing out to the ocean, a wisp of smoke flies past your face. You return to examine and spot a sailor with a pipe in his mouth and a sheet of paper in his hand overlooking steering waters. Smoking trailer. Looking at something? Any spare tobacco? I don't share. Tashi. After introducing himself, Tashi falls silent and begins to read the letter. Trying to draw a conversation from him may be similar to extracting teeth. Vern Sheridan. Ah, I thought he might be an engineer, but... <laughs> hey, poor tricks. A gun savvy, rope savvy, Smoke Chevy Trailer. He's a rough person to get to know. How's it going, Poetrix? Welcome in. Yeah, we are we are land lubbering about here. I want to go back down. Talk to them. Over dinner you overhear the newly picked up stowaway speaking with a one armed man. But that you're lucky. Hunt didn't throw you overboard. Half a mind to do that myself. Come on. I'm here to help. Better know that involves work. Don't expect special treatment. I won't. 
You're an impossible child, Timmy. Dog ward added to the crew. Really cool. Yeah, it's nearly time for the next game. Uh, I just want to get to the next step of the journey and then I'm going to stop. You spot Templeton looking out into the sunset. As you approach, he turns to you and nods. Ah, Officer Shaw. It will be some time before we see a sunset such as this again. The light distribution towards the Southern Pole is quite the change. I noticed you weren't at dinner with the others. I prefer to eat in solitude. I have my own cabin and I make use of it. Templeton keeps his focus on the reflection of the setting sun over the steering waters of the ocean. There is a great expectation upon us, officer. Mm. Who's this benefactor of ours? That is not for you to know. Not yet. Templeton looks down, catching his reflection in the ocean surface. He looks back up at the sunset. Quite the sight, but I wouldn't linger upon it too long. We should retire for the evening. It's important the first officer be well rested. Advance to the next week, okay. Ah, here. Week two. The food rations per crew member this week. Aha. Double rations. I'm not rationing yet. They said we had plenty of fuel. Uh, fuel. So. I'm not going to save. The ship makes its last port at Whale Tail Island. Cordell's sledding dogs are picked up, the scouting crew and Kurt Darling are picked up. And the days are getting brighter as you move as you move further south. Plenty of fools for fuel, that's true. Fools! Fools! Two weeks on the temperance. There's a wrap on your cabin door. Come in. The door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. There you are, Officer Shaw. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. Adorned with a slew of apparatus, the seemingly one-man expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration and the merchandising that followed. All right. I know little of the man. His reputation is indeed great, but the man behind the legend is but a stranger. Hiding away from the rest of us, are you? Are, we, are you always uh, this early to rise? These days I tend to enjoy a good lie-in, but uh, not during an expedition. You know what they say of early birds and worms? Apologies for not stopping by sooner, Shaw. It took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. Oh, I love him already. Um, let's see if he bites. That's right, you're something of a celebrity, aren't you? I take that to mean you haven't heard from me before. Oh, that is a pleasant surprise. Now he's not going to stop talking. There aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. Ah, uh, no, they didn't bring extra lemons. Or a sauerkraut. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired them to explore the world. Quite the honor, is it not? Well, the crew doesn't see the film going type. 
Well, yes, most were born in the sea to begin with. But it is good to know even those old films can inspire. <clears throat> I suppose I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping you'd join me up there. Uh, does Hunt require my presence? No, no. Uh, we finally entered the pack. I thought you wanted to see it for yourself. Uh, I'm not sure if I have work to do. Yeah, I'm coming in a minute. Enjoy your morning, it's a good day. <laughs> doctor's office. He's locked. Seems the good doctor isn't in. Or perhaps enjoying his sleep. You are yet to come across the ship's doctor even after all this time. Curious. Another scientist. You note one of the science team returning to their room. Ah, Miss Gloss. You have Mrs. You have a good rest. Ah, uh, she nods to you. Oh, hello. I did not expect many to be up this early. Harriet Glossley. I believe I've met your husband. Ah, oh, yes. Dwight, Dwight made mention of your encounter. He's still fast asleep. He's adjusted to ship well. Uh, I believe a walk around the ship would help acclimate, acclimate, acclimate myself to the waves. Perhaps it will take some more time. With that, Miss Gloss makes her way to back to her cabin. The science team aren't used to the sea or the sailor folk. Quite the culture clash, isn't it? Well, I'm sure they grow used to them over time. <laughs> what is he doing? Ooh. The Pale Beyond. It's hard to stop. I find this quite uh, quite intriguing. The mix of um, social dilemma to manage the resources and the the mis mysterious bits on Bob's um, of the journey here, of the ship, of the people on it. Um, I think it's fine. It's fine. It's a fine thing. Yeah. This is one for those days when you are, when you have enough time, when you can, uh, you know, go slow and take it all in. Very nice. I like that. I did like that. Yeah, 50, 50 minutes, 55 minutes spent, huh? That's a nice view indeed. That was game number 189 discovered this year. And it's also a game about discovery. <laughs> 